Hello everyone, this is Dr. Pruitt. Welcome to this week's EKG. We've got a good case for you today. Starts with a 51 year old male who is at the homeless shelter and he is complaining of a cough that's been present for a couple of months. He's got a history of alcohol dependence and high blood pressure. His vital signs look like this. So he's got a heart rate of 66, very reassuring. Blood pressure, 180 over 98, a little bit high. Um, I wonder maybe has he been taking his medication. Oxygen saturation looks great within the setting of his cough and his respiratory rate's normal. So this crew goes ahead and gets a 12 lead, which I think is totally appropriate in this instance. And this is what it looks like. I'll give you a second to take a look and see what you think. And as we go through this together, we'll start like we do every single time. So our first question is, what is the rate? Um, again, I let the computer do the work for me. So I see a um, heart rate of 98 that the computer says. I'm gonna do a quick look and see if that matches with what I see. I'm looking for a QRS that matches, uh, lines up with a thick red line here. And I see that one. So we'll do 300, 150, 100, just Slightly less than 100, I would agree with a rate of 98 on this. And as we move on, next we assess our rhythm. So the two questions we ask here are, is it regular and is there a P wave before every QRS? This is gonna be our learning point today, so we'll take a second here to look at this. But I would call this a sinus rhythm. You know, we look for P waves before every QRS to determine if it's sinus. And so lead two is gonna be your best place to see your P waves. I see those here, and if we follow it throughout the precordium, I see P waves in front of pretty much every single QRS complex. So I would call this a sinus rhythm. But if you look at it, you want them to be very regularly spaced, and I see a couple instances of irregularity here. So I would call it irregular. The ones I'm seeing that are jumping out at me, and again, I don't have calipers. If you're ever nervous or worried, you can flip over your piece of paper and see if they march out. But the one that really looks abnormal to me here is this is a little early, right? These are nice and spaced apart. And then this beat right here is early. And then as I look a little closer, maybe this one is a little bit early too. So those are the two that kind of stick out. So I'd call it a little bit irregular. Moving on, as we look at our axis, if you remember the leads that we're most concerned with here are leads one and leads AVF and the direction of the QRS vector in those leads. So lead one is mostly up, that's our left thumb. We're good on the left side. AVF is our right thumb. We're mostly up here. I have two thumbs up. That gives me normal axis deviation. So next we're gonna move on and look at our intervals. The two that we're most concerned about in general are our QRS and our QTC. Again, we let the computer do the work here. I see that our QRS is 92. That's less than 120. I'm very happy with that number. And then our QTC, is 410, that's less than 450. So again, I would call our intervals normal here. And then lastly, we save our ST segments for last. This is where we're looking for any ischemic changes, ST elevation, depression, T wave inversions. We do this in territories. So 2-3 AVF is our inferior leads. Um, these look good to me. I don't see any T wave inversions, ST elevations. I'll move to my high lateral leads next. One and AVL. Again, um, everything looks like it lines up pretty well with the baseline, moving to the septal and anterior areas. Um, again, no really concerning ST elevations or T wave inversions that catch my eye and make me think, is this person having a heart attack or any kind of ischemic problem? So overall, I would call the ST segments normal. Now what we did see on this 12 lead, those irregular beats that seem to happen a little bit early, those are called PACs, premature atrial contractions. And what these are, they're basically early beats that start from a overactive place, usually um, in one of the atria. So that's why you get a narrow complex with these instead of a wide complex. You get a wide complex if it starts from below the AV node. These are above, so they come from the atria, but not from the sinoatrial node itself. They can have, because they're coming from somewhere else, they may have a shorter or longer PR wave, depending on where they're coming from. And they may have a different shape of a P wave as well. 
So what you see here, if we look at this example, um, I would call this P wave, if you look at this P wave, how it marches out, this is probably our baseline rhythm starting from our sinoatrial mode, right? But if you look at these other beats, here's an oddly shaped P wave with a different length of PR. So this is our, our special P wave here that's probably coming too early on our on our beat and these are pretty regular they don't always have to be regular but the p wave is a different shape the pr is a different length and then sometimes if they happen too early it takes a little bit longer for that sinoatrial node to reset so you may see a bit of a pause after you have a pac the pause may be a little bit longer because that whole system is having to reset and so that's what we see on this example here now, if you may ask, like, what causes PACs? Is this bad? Is it dangerous? Generally, they're benign, but there's some things you need to think about. Here we have just an overview of our conduction system. So the sinoatrial node sends a message to the AV node, goes through to the right and left bundles to make the heart contract. This is our electrical conduction system. In a premature atrial contraction, there's a foci coming from somewhere else in the atria that communicates with the AV node and takes over that beat. Well, there's, sometimes there's structural causes that can cause this, whether it's arterial disease, whether it's a valvular problem, or there can be chemical issues as well. It can be an inherent sodium channel problem or alcohol, or sometimes beta blockers can do this as well. So these are important things to think about. Um, if you have a patient that's having frequent PACs and is pretty symptomatic from it and they're maybe a little bit older with cardiac risk factors, it's good for them to get checked out. They may need an echocardiogram or an ultrasound of their heart to make sure that there's no structural abnormalities. And then sometimes these can just be precipitated just like PVCs, it's just a different origin of the contraction, um, from stress or lack of sleep or caffeine or stimulants can do it as well. So take everything in the context of your patient, but um, in the right context, these patients may need to be evaluated further. So if we look at our 12 lead one more time, now that we know what PACs are, we can start to identify them a little bit better. And if I see here, this P wave looks a little different than this P wave. Um, and then the next beat that's a little bit early is this one. And so you see regular, regular, regular. Here's our PAC. The PR is a little bit shorter. We have that characteristic pause afterwards, but a narrow QRS, and then the heart goes right back into its regular rhythm. And so that is what you're seeing here. I would call this a normal sinus rhythm, rate of 98 with the PACs and no ischemic changes. And that's offered today.